let's talk a minute. Cindy Fitzgerald talked uh, on one of her comments about them being in a haunted house. And yeah, they're in a haunted house. And this leads me to want to do a video on a couple things. First of all, I don't tell anybody I'm a psychic. Classically, what they say is psychics. Am I psychic? Yeah, but no more than you are. It's just I'm more aware of it than you are. You don't need a psychic to do anything for you. You are a creator God. You can do anything, ask any question, um, get clarification on anything you want. All you've got to do is learn to ask and uh, hear your higher self, which is connected to source, and all answers will be given to you because you are a creator God. So I don't classically walk around saying that I'm a psychic. Most of the time, if, you, if I do that, People want me to talk to dead people, and I really don't like talking to dead humans because the ones that you can talk to easily, the ones that most people want to talk to are ghosts, what you think of as ghosts, and they really are very similar to live human beings. Uh, they haven't turned around and looked the other way and realized what else they are and what else they have access to. They're so focused on who they were that they're very much like humans. And um, because they're so focused on their human existence, they they can be really, really annoying. They, they, they really are just annoying. I just don't like talking to them. Um, people that are dead dead, that leave the game, that go the outside, that, that are aware of who they really are, I'll talk to them all day long. But nine times out of ten, if somebody wants to talk to a dead loved one, usually they want to talk to somebody who is in a ghost-like state because they don't want to leave this existence. So I don't like saying that I can do that. Now, the ones that are not in a ghost-like state, as you would think of it, who have access to who they really are, when I talk to them, they are not interested in confirming for you that they are who they are. They, they have become who they really are. All of it. The God status that they are. So it's embarrassing for me to ask things like what humans want to ask them. Like, uh, uh, why did you give your ring to my sister instead of me? When you talk to a being that's all in the all it is, the God status, their existence on this planet is a small, tiny blurp in who they really are. It's one of infinite number of creations and experiences and games that they have played. So to get them to focus on this one lifetime is tricky. But to get them to ask a question, like answer a question like that, is uh, well, it's embarrassing. Because I know that really that was created. Who got the ring was really a creation between the sisters that are left down here for their own dualistic experience. It has very little to do with the dead person. Uh, so because I understand all that, I am not going to walk around and say, okay, I'm going to talk to your dead loved one. Now, I'll talk all day long as long as you understand that the being that I'm talking to is now in their fullest sense of being a god. And they are very different than what you remember them in their skin suit down here. Especially if they were in the third dimension. That was just a very small part of who they really are. And it was them playing a game at, in, a, in a human skin suit. So the person that you know of as being your loved one is much much more than that if you're aware of that then the simple answer is well you should already know of course they're with you they can answer any question you've got the second that you're you allow yourself to understand that you're a part of oneness they're a part of oneness and there's a direct link and there's no such thing as time and space then you can start to talk to them yourself i talk to dead people all the time uh the difference is that I know that death is meaningless, that nothing dies. It simply changes what it looks like, changes what it may appear to be like in humans' awareness. 
So to me, once people die or anything dies, plant, animal, it doesn't matter, it's much easier for me to communicate with them because you don't have that rigidity in, of the third dimension physicality or even the fourth dimension physicality. It's much easier for me to communicate with them as the complete entities that they are. Happens very, very quickly. We don't, I don't have to, I don't have to wait for whole sentences. I can get a dump of understanding from them. And, uh, for instance, those of you who have followed my videos know that I was married to two men. One is dead and one is alive. One that was my age died a couple years back in a hand gliding accident. I talked to him all the time. He was the guy that I married right out of high school. He is my oldest friend. He has known me longer than anyone else on the planet. Well, except he's not on the planet anymore. But we talk all the time and laugh all the time about things. And But it is not like you think. It's not like um, we have sentences between each other. We have whole understandings of concepts. And that's how telepathy works. It doesn't work like, okay, I look at you and I know exactly word for word what you're thinking. I couldn't care less about that. That is entirely too slow. And if I'm going to go into a telepathic mode, I want it to work faster than speech, not as slow as speech. So we have the conversation, the understanding, the exchange happens very, very, very quickly. So that's that on the whole psychic thing. Now we'll get back specifically to haunted houses. And there, it is so much more complex than what people understand. There are human beings in skin suits that when they die, uh, pretty much immediately when anyone dies but they want to stay attached to this game, they're outside of linear time space as you know it. So they can move through... Uh, linear time space very rapidly so what looks like somebody uh, may have died in a house a hundred years ago and they're there and they that people look at it in linear time space they go oh they've been haunting this place the whole time well yeah technically they have but to them they've folded that time and space down so that it it really has been what the equivalent to you would be oh I don't know five minutes a year whatever it is they want to experience it as because they can they can manipulate time so like let's say somebody who died a thousand years ago they can be haunting or hanging out I don't like the word haunting that sounds negative they can be hanging out in an area that they were attached to or want to for a thousand years, but that won't seem like a thousand years to the dead person at all. But to a human, they'll go, oh, they've been haunting this place for a thousand years. Well, time is not the same once you die and you get out of the skin suit. There's a lot you can do. Now, these, these haunted, these beings that are haunting, and in 3D, it would be a human, no... No animal or plant or elemental or magical creature would ever haunt anything. These are humans that are doing this. And they just are super attached to whatever. Now, you can say that they have unfinished business. Maybe they can play that out. There's so many different reasons why um, beings stay. They could be long-term humans and they just don't want to go. You know, they just aren't ready. They, don't wanna, they just want to hang around. Um, they could have played a bad guy in your mind and uh, like to continue to annoy people. The only way that that being that was a human will be able to do harm is if the people that they're around believe that they will do harm. It is a dance between the two entities and usually um, that was agreed upon before the game was even started with those entities that there would be a continuation after death and this this fear of this haunted person and what they could do will continue on. And because a game here is not ended with a death. Uh, this is life after life. This is afterlife stuff. This is all one continuous game. It's just humans. They think the game starts with birth in it or conception, whatever. I'm not going to get into all that argument right now all the way up to the death of the skin suit, and that's simply not true. The entity that comes out of skin suit may continue to have all kinds of games after the fact, and one of those specifically is haunting places. Now, also, a 
house, the entity that is a house, uh, can also be appear to be haunted. It could be, it, it just doesn't like the people that live there, so it can do all kinds of weird things. So can areas on the planet. Anything can be a haunted entity, <laughs> uh, so to speak, all right? Now, all it's got to do is match with skin suit people who believe in that sort of thing. They'll be drawn to each other and experiences will be had. Uh, then people who believe in that stuff, they usually believe that it can go away uh, or they run in fear and that increases their fear, which is, has increased their abilities to have dualistic experiences in the third dimension on planet Earth. Now, these are really going away. So, at this point, if you stay out of fear in the fourth dimension, because you are now all in the fourth dimension, you are sitting on a planet right now that's in the fourth dimension. You have access to that. You have access to 5D, too. But a lot of what you see around you, you won't see if you're in 5D. It'll just kind of disappear and you won't see it when you flash up to 5D. For the most part, you're sitting in 4D, but you do have the option when anything happens that you can shoot yourself down to the third dimension. And how that happens without Gaia being there, well, you are a creator God. So if you choose to go down in vibration, you are powerful enough to create what looks like Gaia. I know this is tricky. This is a tricky one. So it will appear to you that everything around you is as it was, only in fear state, and you will absolutely believe that you are standing on energy that is Gaia. That is not true. Every time you drop down to 3D, Gaia is no longer there. But you can make it look like she's there because you're a god. You can do anything, and you get to do anything. But Gaia is also a god, and she gets to do what she wants to do, too. She is not in 3D anymore. That's her choice. But both gods can have what they want. All right? <laughs> I know that's really confusing, right? <laughs> but nonetheless, it's the truth, and I'm doing the best I can to explain it to you guys. Okay? So, um, what else was I going to say on this? Seems like there was something else I was going to say. It just went flying out of my head. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it. Okay, that's it for this one. Love you bunches and bunches. And, 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 hold that thought. And, yes, Victoria, I do read the comments. You guys are regular people to me. I'm a regular people. So, yeah, I will say your name. I'm not some far off. Guys, speak up who have met me. I'm just a regular old person. I love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye now.